We have been trying to understand the theory of business and all of us know by now that the firms want to maximize total profits and total profits is a difference between total revenue or TR and total cost and so for the firms to maximize total profits they have to keep the costs at the lowest possible level and to maximize total profits they have to maximize total revenue and that's how they can maximize total profits now we have examined the total cost side of the story in great detail we have looked at it in the short run as well as in the long run and now what we start looking at is look at total revenue or the revenue stream for the firm costs are essentially an outflow of money from the business and revenue is an inflow of money into business now all of us know that total revenue or tr which is the same thing as sales revenue is a product of price times quantity sold and so if you sell 100 units of shoes at five dollars a piece the total revenue that you get is five hundred dollars and so this is the concept of total revenue we also looked at marginal concept on the cost and production side we have a similar thing on the revenue side called marginal revenue and what is marginal revenue change in total revenue divided by change in quantity of output or the question we ask here is how much money flows into a firm when the firm sells an additional unit of output that whatever revenue is generated by that extra unit of output is called marginal revenue and then we are again interested in what is called average revenue which is simply total revenue divided by output now look at the following total revenue we know is price times quantity and so average revenue will be what let me just move this around average revenue could be written in this manner and that is price times quantity divided by quantity and we can cancel out the common terms which is q and what we are left with is simply p or price and so average revenue is the same thing as price of the good so whatever economists call average revenue is something that ordinary folks consider to be price so just remember average revenue and price are one and the same thing so we have we should know what is total revenue what is marginal revenue and what is average revenue now consider the following example suppose there's a firm that sells sweaters for $25 a piece $25 a piece and it can sell as many sweaters it wants but it'll sell it at $25 a piece so based on this we can calculate total revenue so in the first column what we have is quantity which runs from 0 to 13 and we can figure out total revenue and what will be total revenue when the firm sells nothing total revenue is zero when the firm sells one sweater and it sells it for $25 the money it receives is $25 when the firm sells two sweaters the money it will receive will be 25 times 2 which will be 50 and in this way we can complete this table this column relating to total revenue now marginal revenue we know is change in total revenue divided by change in output now if the firm sells nothing and then sells one unit of output 
How much is change in total revenue? It is 25 minus 0 divided by change in quantity of output, which is 1 minus 0. And this will give us marginal revenue of $25. Now the firm has already sold one unit and now sells the second unit. How much is change in total revenue? It changes from $25 to $50. So the change in total revenue is $25. How much is change in output? It is 2 minus 1 or simply 1. So how much is marginal revenue or the second unit sold? It will again be $25. Let's just do it for the third sweater which is sold. How much is change in total revenue? 75 minus 50 which is 25. Divide this by change in output, which is 3 minus 2, and again, this gives us $25. And if you go on doing this, what you'll find is marginal revenue everywhere here is $25. And in any case, you should know how to calculate marginal revenue. What will be average revenue? We have already discussed average revenue is the same thing as price. So average revenue will be $25 all throughout. So let me just write this in the middle, $25 all throughout. And this is something you can check. And what is total average revenue? Average revenue is total revenue divided by output. So here for the first unit of output, it will be 25 by 1, which will give us 25. For two units of output, the total revenue received is 50. And since the firm is selling two sweaters, we divide this by two and what we get is 25. So here what you find is average revenue, which is the same thing as $25, which is the price. And so average revenue will be 25 all throughout. In this example, in just this example, what you find is average and marginal revenue are one and the same thing. Average revenue equals marginal revenue and this happens only when the firm keeps the price of its product as fixed or it can sell different quantities of output at a given price that's when MR equals AR and we already know average revenue is the same thing as price so here price is the same thing as average revenue and in this case it equals marginal revenue. On this chart, what we have done is we have plotted the points that we had in the previous table and we joined them. So on the horizontal axis, what we have is output. And on the vertical axis, we have the financial variables like total revenue, marginal and average revenue in dollars. And we can plot the points relating to total revenue. For example, when one unit of output is sold, the total revenue received by the firm is $25. When two units of output are sold, the firm receives $50. And in this way, we can plot these points, and what we get is a total revenue curve. And as you can see, as the firm sells more, total revenue increases as well. Then on the same diagram, what I have done is I have drawn the marginal revenue curve. And this marginal revenue figures we already know are fixed at $25, irrespective of how much output is sold by the firm. And so what you get is a line which is parallel to the horizontal axis, and this is called the MR curve. And in this case, since AR and MR are the same. This could also be called the AR curve or the MR curve. And since AR is the same thing as price, we could also call this the price curve. But remember, if the firm sells different units of output at a fixed price, the MR or the AR curve will be horizontal or parallel to the horizontal axis. Now what we have done is we have calculated total marginal and average revenues for a firm which sells different quantities of output at a 
fixed price, which is $25 a piece. And one of the ways that this kind of a situation may exist is when this firm is very small in relation to the market, or in this case, when a firm or an economic agent is very small in relation to the market, it has no control over the price, or what it does is it simply takes the price as given, wherever it may be determined, and do the best it can under the circumstances. So essentially what we are looking at is a situation where a firm is a price taker, and by this, we know what we mean. <clears throat> the firm has no control over the price. Whatever is decided in the marketplace, it takes it as given and does the best it can under the circumstances. Now, this happens under a market condition called perfect competition. And what we do next is we just look at what are the circumstances in which a situation like perfect competition can exist. So here are the assumptions we make about perfect competition. The first one being all economic agents are rational. When we use the term economic agents, what we have in mind are consumers and producers. And if they are rational, what this means is consumers will maximize satisfaction and producers or sellers will maximize total profits. And then all economic agents have perfect knowledge or they know all that has to be known about a product, its price, and so on. This is the first assumption we make. The second assumption we make, and this is an important one, there are very small sellers but there are extremely large number of them or there are very large number of very small sellers one of the ways to look at this is consider the case of a small wheat farmer say in brazil who owns two or three acres of land in relation to the entire world market this farmer is very small in relation to the world market and so what this person does is takes the world price as given and tries to do the best it, he or she can. Or in other words, when we have a situation like this where we have very large number of very small sellers, what this means is all of them are price takers. The third assumption we make is all sellers sell exactly the same product. And this is particularly true from the perspective of consumers. So consumers don't really differentiate between, say, wheat coming from, say, Brazil, U.S., India, or China. They treat wheat as wheat and then make the best buying decision. The last assumption we make for perfect competition is the assumption of free entry, free exit. What this means is, in a legal as well as the financial sense, it is costless for any firm to start a business or quit business. So essentially what we are looking at are very, very small business people. So these are the assumptions which give us a situation where each seller or a buyer is a price taker, and this is called perfect competition.